Now, with the federal government raising concerns about food security in the country, state governments like River State have to up their game when it comes to agricultural development. Now, here in Rivers, the state government is investing in agricultural development with projects such as this banana plantation I'm standing on, of course, which also have wider implications on the people of the community standing right behind me. Take a look. To the average man on the street, River State is known as one of the largest oil producing states in Nigeria with enormous reserves in oil and gas. What is less known is the fact that more than half of the state's population are farmers and that it is surrounded by large tropical rainforests, vast mangrove swamps and several rivers. The importance of the state as a major source of the global crude oil supply and the controversy surrounding inequality in its community that led to violence and civil unrest has defined River State over the past two decades. But the increasing urgency among policy makers to end Nigeria's dependence on oil revenues and address food security in the country has driven the state to revive its agricultural sector. We were investing in agriculture for what you just said, the issue of food production and for the basis of employment, employment generation, not just because we want to invest in agriculture. We think that agriculture is, uh, is a source by which you can create mass employment, uh, especially for the, those who are not uh, too educated. Uh, so we're focusing on that to remove people from the streets and take them back to uh, jobs like this that will help us have uh, rest amongst those who do other business and are threatened by the poor. So this can at least put food on the table of the poor. That is the main objective of the agricultural program that we're pursuing. Then to do that, we're not just saying private sector should just go and invest. Most of them are very scared to invest in agriculture in Nigeria. The state government says its plan is to revive the sector and at the same time revitalize the local communities by introducing more advanced farming techniques that enhance production and value addition, but also create huge employment opportunities and encourage enterprise development and skills transfer. Government shall be involved in agriculture to the extent, to the extent that government promotes investments in agriculture to the extent that government promotes and assists farmers to have good harvest, to the extent that government does direct investment in agriculture for it to be a foreign exchange and where there be need, and that government will also be involved in agriculture to the extent that it is used as a tool to create employment opportunities for our people. I've tried to reduce for you the, 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 the planks the building blocks upon which our, our policy in agriculture rests. In the heart of the oil-rich Ogoni region, an area plagued by poverty and civil unrest, the state government acquired large hectares of abandoned farmland and has embarked on an ambitious banana development project. The project is an important part of the government's employment strategy as banana planting is known to be labor-intensive and to deliver a quick return on investment. Today, the project generates about 300,000 banana plants annually and its target is to be fully operational in two years and export about 80% of its harvest once it hits full capacity. So far, uh, this place has generated an employment opportunity of about 140 persons, having cultivated only about 80 hectares of land. About 2,000 is to be cultivated, meaning that about 1,920 is still yet to be cultivated. So if you um, um, extrapolate uh, with the area we are going to in terms of 2,000 hectares, you can now add the numbers. But when I added it, it showed me that this farm will generate about 4,000 employment opportunities. And that is what we want to achieve here. And if we throw in 4,000 employment opportunities into the labor market, we would have reduced the number of people that are seeking employment. And then for the number of boxes of banana that are going to come out of this place, we would have been able to solve seriously the issue of food um, insecurity, which of course is tied to national security. Now. The state government is partnering with Mexican company Grupo San Carlos, the largest producer of bananas in Mexico and a global leader in the export of the product for over 21 years. 
forming a special purpose vehicle called Precious Bananas Limited, in which the government owns a 40% equity stake and the private sector owns 60%. However, Grupo San Carlos will run the farm independent of the state government. Yes, we are a Mexican company that is coming here to help to the people, the Nigerian people, uh, supported by the government, by the River State, River State government. And we are uh, in charge of the uh, training of the Nigerian people to, to get the people, to get this project and get a successful project. For, for, for the community, for the generation of uh, employment for all the people in, this, in these communities. The Grupo San Carlos operates in South America, which is the largest producer of bananas. The company says it chose to come to Nigeria because not only does it have the ideal climate for the cultivation of bananas, but because of its proximity to Northern Europe in terms of the export of the product. While bananas are not the main cash crop grown in river states, the fruit is a more attractive option than cash crops like cassava, as the industry exports over 100 million tons worldwide and generates over $5 billion every year. And consumers are willing to pay a premium price for the product, an aspect the state intends to fully take advantage of in terms of revenue generation. It's been a nice profitable in the international market. All of us travel to different parts of the country, different parts of the world, and we see how much we buy banana. In Europe, London, Paris, everywhere you go to, those bananas are not um, cultivated in Europe. They are cultivated in some other places that have the same geographical advantage that we have here. So all we are trying to do is to put our natural resources and advantages to, to use so that we are also able to compete. The project comprises two facilities. A greenhouse where local workers currently grow about 50,000 merry stems monthly and the plantation site where they are cultivated. These merry stems are grown for about four to seven weeks before they are transferred to the plantation site. The company plans to produce about 60,000 of these plants annually, also using the site as a research facility that seeks the production methods that optimize the production of bananas. The merry stems are transferred to this plantation where other plants are already being cultivated on over 70 hectares of land. The company continues to clear out surrounding bushes with the goal to expand the farmland to 200,000 hectares. The, the process that we have here is uh, first the first step of the process is the greenhouse that you are here with us. is where the plants is become growing since it uh, becomes a little, a little plant named Mary Stems, and we get the, these plants for going to the cultivation area. This is very important area because we need to take care of the plants. It's, it's ready to go to the plantation. Uh, we have here a uh, very time to grow in about uh, six or seven weeks, and then have to, it's time to go to the cultivation area for this plantation. The second stage is the, is the most important or the biggest uh, area, the biggest area, for this situation, for we, we have to there nine months of cultivation. In nine months of cultivation, we produce the first uh, fruits, the first okay. production of, of fruit, okay. ready, ready to go to the market and ready to, to commercialization. Right. When it comes here, we plant them. We the field has already been prepared using machines to prepare. We have some furrows that enable for drainage. Uh, this enables. Uh, the, this for just drainage, and then it aids in nitrogen supply to the plant for proper development. This project is a large-scale operation that will include the packaging and processing of the product once complete, a feat that will enhance the welfare of the community by creating job opportunities for indigents, not only as farmers, but also in key management positions. Local youth leaders admit that the Ogoni community was apprehensive about being left out once again when the project began, but are now relieved that it has had a positive impact on the community, creating jobs for their educated but unemployed youth, many who were once part of the violent militants that protested the injustice and inequality that the oil sector boom brought to their communities. There should be development in Ogoni land, and now this is as an example of the, struggle, of the struggle and they have brought in this development to empower the youth to ensure that the mentality of the people change to bring business 
it because it will, it will, it will promote business. It will also change the lifestyle of our people. The living standard will also increase. So that is the meaning of the company. And if they are here, not only that, the, the Wiki community and Sogo Kuduku, they have now been recognized in the international community. That actually make an impact on the community, especially the youth, because uh, from what you can see here, you see that 99% are youth. You don't see any elderly person here. So the uh, project is very good and has turned the lives of our youth to better life than what it used to be before because most of them have been carefully employed by this project. John Agbra works on the banana plantation as a farmer. He says that despite the fact that he had an education, he was unable to get a job to support his family for several years. Though he had no prior knowledge in the cultivation of bananas or considered working as a farmer, his community leaders convinced him to train as a worker. John says he is content that today he is able to earn a monthly salary that provides a roof over his family and pays for the education of his children. We have not been paying for the land. I'm planting a uh, banana. And the banana we are planting, well, we have not known him. We have not known the product before, but uh, this is our first experience that how to plant a banana. River State is embarking on other agricultural projects like this plantation that are community-based and at the same time huge revenue generators for the state, such as the Buguma Fish Farm, where the state government is partnering with Israeli firm Onida Development in the construction of an advanced aquaculture system, one of its kind in the West African region. Buguma is one of the towns where large oil companies like Royal Dutch Shell operate, but the majority of the local populace are poor and unemployed. The town, however, is home to the new Calabar River and mangrove swamps like this one. This 1.56 billion Nara project plans to turn this community around and is funded by a combination of a federal government's commercial credit scheme and state government funds, while Onida handles the operation, training and maintenance of the project. Okay, now this project is going to cost us um, a little bit above 1.5 billion Naira. Why the 1 billion Naira is from the commercial agri-credit scheme loan, the 561 million Naira also is from the River State um, government. So we have made a proper, we have utilized the funds that we collected from the, for the CAX scheme. You know, uh, every state has what uh, they want to do with their own, but this is what this governor and the executive council of River State, you know, thought that we should do with it. And I am very happy that we apply the CAX fund in this way because many, many years to come, we can say that this is a proceed. We can say that this is uh, an outcome of the one billion naira that CBN gave to uh, this administration in the name of tax fund. Unlike other similar projects that promote advanced systems by bringing in foreign expertise while neglecting the overall community, the Buguma Fish Farm is the largest employer in its host community and once complete will train and bring on more local staff. The state government has created an outgrower scheme which will integrate the community in the daily operations of the farm and open up opportunities for them to participate in the commercial aspects of the system, such as the processing and sale of the fish. Our grass scheme is intended to involve and engage more people in the project. But even before we go on to that, this project has become the biggest employer of labor in this part of the state. Even at the construction stage, I've told you here that the indigents of this area that are working here alone are about 60, 50, 60. And that's the biggest employer of labor around here. So you can imagine when the project comes to its food capacity, how many people will be engaged here, how many professionals will be engaged here and all that. And then when you now um, tie that to the employment opportunities that we created via the outgrower scheme that we intend to introduce with this project, then it becomes a huge, 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 you know, uh, uh, employment generator. But the reason being, being that um, apart from the people who are working here, uh, who will be making use of the processing facility that is going to be built for this project, we are now going to encourage everybody because fishing is cultural here. Everybody, virtually everybody here is a fisherman. 
So we encourage them to the extent that they can produce, and when they produce, their produce will not be wasted because they are, these people are here to serve as off-takers. Off-takers in the sense that they buy all the things you have and then they can process, you know, and then uh, preserve and process them in such a way that they can now be given more value. Projects like this banana plantation and the Baguma fish farm have generated foreign and private sector interest in River State's agricultural sector. And the state is now exploring other areas of development. Now, as you can see behind me, huge plots of virgin land are being cleared to create the space for commercial farms. Now, after the break, I'll give you a better picture of what this land is being created for. So do stay with us.